So you might have seen this image in one of the previous videos or somewhere else on the media. This is the most recent image from the James Webb Telescope, showing us how extremely powerful James Webb Telescope actually is. These were just calibration images, but they already show us extreme detail from four major instruments located on the telescope suggesting that the astronomy in general, and infrared astronomy specifically, is about to reach its golden age. And because of this recent release, a lot of astronomers jumped on the opportunity to see if they can actually compare this to some of the previous releases by other telescopes. I think one of the better images is right here by Andres Gaspar. You can find this image in the description below, and it actually shows us how the 40cm mirror from the WISE telescope on the left compared to the 85cm Spitzer telescope and the James Webb telescope on the right with the instrument known as MIRI, with the size of the mirror now being 6.5 meters across. You can actually learn about all of this in one of the previous videos in the description below. But when I was looking at these images and reading all of this, something was not adding up, something was kind of missing. Wasn't there something else in between here, some other telescope? Something that was still large and something that was also infrared and did participate in many scientific missions with a lot of people working on that telescope now working for the James Webb telescope? Huh. It was kind of weird, but I swear there was something else. And I started looking and then I remembered there was one telescope. And that kind of made me realize the power of social media and the power of hype of the internet. Hello, wonderful person. This is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about that other telescope we seem to have forgotten about. And I mean really forgotten about. Okay, so let me give you an example. So just based on this one simple video, I think a lot of you will probably be able to name the telescope. That's of course the James Webb. Okay, how about this one? Well, I'm sure a lot of you can name this one too. Many of you even have a Lego version of this. This is the Hubble telescope. Both obviously pretty famous, and mostly famous because of the representation in the media and all of the images they were able to create over the years. What are we looking at right here? What is this called? Where is this from? Who made this? Does this exist? Did it exist? And so yeah, that's the telescope that was actually right between those two other telescopes, between the Spitzer and the James Webb. The infrared telescope with a mirror approximately three and a half meters across. A little bit smaller than the James Webb telescope, but way, way larger than Spitzer or WISE. And though I'm sure some of you are screaming at me right now saying, of course we know what this is, and naming it out loud, in reality I think a lot of people completely forgot about the Herschel Space Observatory. The observatory that operated between 2009 and 2013, the telescope that was also extremely large in size and was actually launched using exactly the same rocket as the James Webb telescope, and moreover, it was launched into the exactly same orbit using exactly same profile. And so if you ever wondered why ESA was able to launch James Webb Telescope with so much precision and create such an opportunity for the mission to go on for 20 years, it's because they've done it before. They've done it using Herschel Observatory. And so because this particular telescope wasn't really discussed much in the last year or so, and because it actually played a huge role in the successes of the James Webb Telescope, I wanted to briefly discuss what this was and what it discovered in its four years of operation, but also why it's no longer operational and what the scientists learned about the operation of infrared telescopes since its launch. So first of all, this was not a NASA's mission. This was a European Space Agency mission, and it was also a mission launched during the time when the space missions in general were slowly becoming less and less popular and were generally not talked about as much as they're talked about today. And I would even go as far as to say that it was actually because of SpaceX and because of their successes and various failures that were documented over many, many different videos that made space cool again and made people interested in various space missions, including various telescopes. And NASA realized that and joined on the opportunity of using a lot of social media and a lot of, I guess, hype in a sense, to try to make us all excited about various Mars missions and of course about the James Webb Telescope as well. But Herschel was launched in 2009, and it was launched to very little fanfare, but the mission profile in this case was almost identical to the James Webb telescope. It was to be launched into the Lagrange 2 point, located behind planet Earth, it would then orbit the point of nothingness for several years, and it would try to stabilize its orbit using limited fuel. But unlike James Webb Telescope, whose operation is essentially limited by the amount of fuel to maintain this particular orbit, 
For Herschel, the limit was slightly different. It was because of the coolant used. Just like James Webb, it used an active coolant. And in this case, it relied on liquid helium, which would cool down the device for approximately four years. And once the liquid helium ran out, that's when the mission would be over. But the thing is, the James Webb telescope also uses a relatively similar cooling technique. Especially for this instrument right here, known as MIRI. It has to be kept at approximately 7 Kelvin. That's super, super cold. Here's what a typical cryocooler sort of looks like, and this is from James Webb Telescope and is somewhat similar to the one on Herschel as well. But unlike Herschel Observatory, this one also has something else to cool it down. The enormous sun shield that you see right here, that does most of the cooling on the telescope, with the liquid helium only required for even further cooling, which in theory makes the cooling system on James Webb Telescope way, way more efficient and allows it to operate for an extremely long period of time, in theory actually indefinitely. But Herschel Space Observatory did not have that, and so by 2013 it essentially ran out. Although up until that point, this was the largest infrared telescope ever built, up until 2021. And what I find really intriguing is that this mission was also approximately 10 times cheaper overall, way more efficient, even though overall it was just as complex, involving just as many years of development and just as much commitment from various organizations as with the James Webb. The total cost of this mission was approximately 1.1 billion euros. And that of course includes the spacecraft, it also includes the mission expenses and all of the scientific operation for roughly around 4 years. And just like the James Webb, Herschel specialized in collecting the data from the Milky Way galaxy from various extragalactic objects billions of light years away from various newborn galaxies, and overall it made over 35,000 scientific observations and was involved in over 600 different observation programs, many of them available right here in Herschel Science Archive, and nearly 3,000 different publications mentioning the data from Herschel at some point. And pretty much every single image involving distant universe in the last few years involved the data from Herschel. Here's for example one of the previous discoveries of two galaxies colliding really really far away. These were the images produced by this telescope and that's essentially what the scientists had at their disposal for many years. But the thing is many scientists have gotten so used to this data that in many different publications, the name Herschel Observatory is not even mentioned. And that's basically to show that it became so established in astronomy that many papers would only just mention far infrared data. That would always mean Herschel Observatory. But in the last decade, it also made quite a lot of different discoveries based on all of the data collected. For example, discoveries in regards to very unusual steps in various star forming processes, some processes previously unknown to us such as the discoveries from NGC 1999, this unusual dark nebula that seems to discard material around the system in a way that was previously unknown and never seen before. It was also the first telescope to officially confirm the existence of oxygen in various regions of the galaxy, the existence of water vapor around various star systems, and to be more exact, the detection of a lot of cold water vapor around very young stars forming accretion disks, which then of course led the scientists to the discovery of how the water most likely ended up on our planet, and it also discovered several unusual and quite exceptional starburst galaxies, such as for example HFLS3, the galaxy you see right here, that was located billions and billions of light years away from us when the universe was only approximately 880 million years old. And this was one of the strangest starburst galaxies ever found. It was also the first telescope to officially discover huge numbers of so-called interstellar filaments that are now believed to be a crucial step in the birth of various stars, and even was the first to confirm the existence of water on the dwarf planet Ceres, something that was assumed but never proven, with lots and lots of other incredible images produced over the years. And honestly, it's one of the most prolific observatories of European Space Agency. And even today there's at least one paper that comes out somewhere on the internet that mentions the data from this telescope in some capacity. Yet almost no one talked about this in the last year, especially prior to James Webb launch. And honestly I can only speculate why. I guess first of all it's because this was launched prior to the advent of social media becoming a widespread phenomenon. 
When it was launched, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube were still growing, they were still not as large as they are today. And of course, iPhone has just come out a couple of years prior, with a lot of Android phones still not really being that popular, and the idea of sharing media on social media not really being a huge phenomenon yet. Which meant that all these incredible pictures were mostly used by astronomers and by scientific publications. Or at least that's why I'm guessing. I mean, there could be other reasons why it wasn't as popular, but in reality I guess we'll never really know. But in 2022, astronomy is cool again, and so are various telescopes. And so in the last 10 years, things have definitely changed. But that's also why I actually wanted to mention this telescope, because it was quite productive, it was definitely one of the most powerful observatories of its time, but more importantly, a lot of the advances and a lot of the success of James Webb Telescope are directly related to the successes of Herschel. Like I mentioned, a lot of scientists that worked on Herschel are now working here, so we wouldn't really have this without that other one. And by the way, the name Herschel comes from the William Herschel, and also I guess his sister Caroline Herschel, both of whom were responsible for discovering both the infrared spectrum and planet Uranus. So definitely worth remembering the legacy of this incredible telescope. And as I mentioned, all of the data that it collected over the years is available right here in the description below. On that note, well, that's pretty much it. So right here, right between these two telescopes, you could technically put Herschel with the actual data most likely being somewhere in between the quality of Spitzer and the quality of James Webb. I guess now all we can do is wait for more incredible imagery from the James Webb telescope and to hear about its first discoveries and its first studies which I've discussed in one of the previous videos somewhere right there or in a description. On that note, thank you for watching, subscribe, maybe share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support the channel on Patreon by joining a channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.